Hi, I'm Randy Robison. This is Life Today TV. I have Jennifer Crow. She is the what a co-founding pastor, is that right? Mm -hmm. Of uh, Victory Church in Oklahoma City, campuses all across the area. So if you're up there, check them out, Victory Church, and the author of this new book, Perfect Lies, and it's got lives crossed out. The V is missing, so there's a little wordplay going on there. Um, she is going to talk about the book uh, on Life Today uh, to a greater degree, uh, so be sure to check that out, lifetoday.org. But I want to talk about a couple of things with her that you won't hear on the program. So Jennifer, thank you for coming up here and being with me here. I love it. Thanks for having me, Randy. All right, let's kick this off with uh, something that was slightly controversial, I understand, with maybe the publisher and some of the other churches, and that is this concept of meditative prayer. Right. I think right. people are scared of the term meditation. What are, what are you talking about? You know, um, I knew about supplicative prayer and intercessory prayer and all kinds of prayer, but I didn't know that for me to be healed, what I needed was to take some time quietly to actually reflect on the truth of God's Word, but not words on the page. Because, you know, Randy, when we think thoughts, we don't think thoughts as words on a page but we think in the form of pictures. When you think about things in your life that have meant the most to you, or memories that you have from vacation or whatever, you're not seeing the words, you know, I went to Mexico and laid on the beach. You're seeing a picture of that beach. When you see that picture, if it's a good memory, your heart rate actually, you know, kind of starts to relax, your muscles start to relax. You start to actually feel what you may have felt as you are reliving that memory. Mm -hmm. What I found for me, Randy, was that I had so many bad pictures, or I say bad pictures, painful pictures in my mind. And what I discovered was that the, the painful pictures were mostly associated with a lie, that I was misinterpreting what happened. Um, I was believing something that was false. And what I learned to do, Randy, was to sit quietly and identify the picture that was bothering me or bringing me pain to shine the light of God's truth on that picture by changing the picture to reflect the truth and then simply thinking about it for five minutes. Okay. So... so. <laughs> You're not in a yoga position or anything weird like that? Not not in a yoga position, but I will say I can't just be like laying around. I found for me I have to I have to concentrate. Um, you know, Oral Roberts um, used to talk about a point of contact. Mm -hmm. You know, he used to tell people, put your hand on yourself or mm -hmm. put your hand on the TV to release your faith. I found for me, Randy, to meditate and to pray that I need to maybe put my hands together or maybe put my hand on my head or the part of my body that's hurting. Because just like a little four-year-old, you tell a four-year-old to bow your head and fold your hands. Right. It's so they can concentrate. They're posturing. Sure. Yeah, so that they're not being distracted. Right. So I found for me, just for those few five minutes, if I will put myself in a on-purpose position of prayer, it truly helps me to concentrate and and use that opportunity to shine the light of God's truth. Okay, let's let's unpack this just a bit. Sure. Give me an example of, of a negative thought that you believed or that, that was plaguing you. Yes. You know, uh, something that plagues every human being is the thought that I am bad. Mm -hmm. You know, that I must be perfect or else I won't mm -hmm. measure up. Right. Um, this can come from when you're a child and your parents discipline you as parents should. Right. But because we live in this world, um, I can remember a spanking that I received at the age of, I don't know, I was four or five, something like that. And I deserved it right. because my mother had told me, you better clean up your toys. And she repeatedly warned me, if you don't clean up your toys, you're going to get a spanking. When I didn't do it and she came in and she got my daddy's belt and she was angry, and she spanked me really hard, laid me across the bed. So even when I was 40 years old, I had a really bad feeling that I deserved that spanking. I was a bad little girl. And it didn't bother me really too bad, but 
there's a twinge there. So I asked myself, what is the truth of that picture? Well, the truth is we know that God, that Jesus died and paid the penalty for our sins. So I pictured in my time of meditation, Jesus walking into the room, taking me off the bed, pulling me off the bed and taking me over to the Father. And then he laid down on the bed and he was receiving the spanking. But that's still not the whole truth because was it really my mother that was whipping Jesus? No, it was Satan that was trying to punish him. So I saw a picture of the Holy Spirit taking my mother who had her own issues and her own problems, mm -hmm. her own things to deal with. And so it was Satan whipping Jesus, taking the penalty for my sin. So I'm over there with the Father and instead of this frizzy haired, dirty faced, snotty nosed little girl with grandma beads and the wrinkles of my neck as you get in South Texas. I was beautiful, I was clean, I was pure. I was dressed in white and the father was just saying, Jennifer, I love you and, and I forgive you and I don't even see your faults. How did this impact you other than, you know, having a nice picture instead mm -hmm. of a, a bad picture? How, how mm -hmm. did this kind of change your life? You know, after six weeks of practicing this type of meditative prayer, three to five times a day, because I was flat on my back from just a break, a physical breakdown, physical and emotional breakdown, I began to feel love and peace, so much so that I decided in my heart, even if I remain sick and I never get healed, I don't even care because I feel so wonderful inside. It began to heal me from the inside out, Randy. And what happened was after about six weeks, I experienced a dramatic physical healing where I felt this warmth going through my body. And you know, it was only a few months later, Randy, that I had my final panic attack. That was one of the things I dealt with. And I have not been on prescription medication or had any more panic attacks for over eight years now. Mm. And it I was cured of several incurable conditions. The doctor said, you'll just have to manage them for the rest of your life. But I believe, Randy, that because I learned how to get rid of that stress of those lying thoughts, I think, I think my body could relax and work the way God had designed it to work, mm -hmm. which is, you know, with a strong immune system. I'm assuming that, that scripture was ingrained in this as well. Oh, absolutely, were, were absolutely. You, were you selecting scriptures and making that a part of the meditation or maybe picturing? Yes, yes, and, and I had been meant. a Christian since I was 10 years old. I was a pastor's wife. Mm -hmm. I knew the Word of God. I'd read the Bible. I knew the principles of God's Word. But the key for me was changing those pictures in light of the truth of mm. God's word. The, 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 the pictures have to be truthful. They have to measure up yes. to the word of God. And I knew his word, so that's what I used to. Has to everyone responded that. favorably when you've told them about this? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> well, first of all, some people say, well, that's maybe that's good for her, but yeah, it doesn't that. work for me or I don't need it. And that's fine. You know, Every human being is different, and, and, but I know there are other people out there like me. But then there's also been some people that have said, well, the Bible doesn't tell us to make up pictures about things and to you know, use our imagination. Well, it does say meditate on this word day it and night. It does. So I mean, the meditation is definitely a scriptural prescription. Do you think it's the Eastern mysticism that's kind of crowded out you know, some of the more meditative practices that, that maybe have tainted it a little bit for some Christians? I certainly do. And, and um, you know, people ask me, well, what's the difference in what you are saying and New Age meditation? Right, right. And I have to say, I don't know because <laughs> I've never studied New Age meditation. Okay. I don't know anything about New okay, Age meditation. Yeah. Well, that's I, why I ask about the scripture, because if, if the scripture is the basis for it, there's a difference right absolutely, there. Absolutely, uh, absolutely. And, and so you're, you're, you're seeking God's truth, not just positive feelings that come from yourself. Exactly. Right. It's all based on the truth of the Word of God that I know. And I have, in my book, Perfect Lies, I talk about nine different lies that I believed, and there's scriptures as the antidote to every one of those lies. Excellent. If someone wants to uh, learn more about you, what website can they go to? JenniferCrow.tv. JenniferCrow.tv. Mm -hmm. Do check it out, and you can get her book, Perfect Lies, uh, if you're 
you've been a little bit intrigued by this and you want to find out what those nine lives were that she believed she overcame, it's all right there in, in her book. I encourage you to get it and check out their website. Thank you for being with us. Don't forget to check her out on Life Today at lifetoday.org.